The Labor Party in Australia are in trouble. Albanese and Labor slump to worst position in news polls since 2022 election. The slumping polls show how damaging the heavy defeat of the voice referendum and continuing cost of living pressures have been to Prime Minister Anthony Albanese. His net approval is down 10 points, with 52% respondents dissatisfied with his overall performance, while only 42% are satisfied. This is easily his lowest net approval since becoming PM. Unfortunately for Australia, Labor have decided to start playing a dangerous game called identity politics. Instead of focusing on things that matter to all Australians, like cost of living, they've been busy dividing us up based on people's ancestry with their woeful voice campaign. Please vote yes, he cried, but Australians voted against division and voted no. But the identity politics game continues. This is Shannon Fentiman, Queensland Minister for Health and Minister for Women. Obviously, as a Labor politician, she pushed for people to vote yes. She's a trained lawyer, having attained a Master of Laws from the University of Melbourne. The Courier-Mail recently published a piece titled, Will Shannon Fentiman Save the Labor Party? The charismatic health minister is Labor's last line of defence against the humiliating loss it faces in next year's state election. I would suggest that if she is the last line of defence, the Labor Party are in trouble. Sure, I'm mixing state politics with federal politics, but I think either way, the Labor Party are on the nose. Earlier this year, Ms Fentiman made comments regarding the definition of a woman. She would know she's the Minister for Women after all. Not to mention that she's the Minister for Health as well, so she should know all about human biology, one would expect. She said... Anyone that identifies as a woman is a woman. And as the Minister for Women, all people who identify as a woman are a part of our policies and strategies to advance gender equality. So according to the Minister of Women, anyone who identifies as a woman is a woman. I'll get to that soon. She gave this announcement in response to a terrible, terrible sticker that was stuck outside her office. I'll zoom in for you. It reads, Woman. Noun. Adult human female. Clearly, this is bordering on a hate crime. On Facebook, Ms. Fentiman replied, Someone did this to my office recently. I want to be very clear. I don't stand for these sort of views. Our community doesn't stand for these views. And Queenslanders don't stand for these views. Oh really? Queenslanders don't stand for these views? I would suggest that the vast majority of Queenslanders and Australians do agree with that tiny little sticker stuck on the side of your office. Actually, even Google Definitions, the Oxford Dictionary, agrees with that definition, and I quote, Woman, noun, an adult female human being. Actually, even the leader of the Labor Party, the Prime Minister himself, seems to disagree with the Minister for Women, both before and after he was elected. He said, How do you define a woman, Mr Albanese? An adult female. An adult female. Yeah. What is a woman? Prime Minister. An adult female. Yep, he seems to agree with the sticker. Isn't it funny? We live in such a country free of war and terror where a sticker is treated like some kind of terrible atrocity. Actually, back in 2015 when Ms Fentiman was Minister for Child Safety, apparently many children died under her watch in government care. Shadow Health Minister Ros Bates told Parliament, Under Miss Fentiman's watch, 12 children allegedly died in care under suspicious circumstances. Instead of taking responsibility, the minister attended a music festival on the same day the front page of the newspaper said the department and the minister knew about at least five deaths of children under suspicious circumstances. Actually, a recent YouGov poll found that 91% of respondents said that health has either worsened or stayed the same since Ms Fentiman became Minister for Health in May this year. Forget that, there's a factual sticker on my wall. To be fair, some commentators have sided with the Minister for Women on this. Political reporter Amy Ramikas accused the Prime Minister of legitimising a hateful question. She tweeted, What is a woman? It was a dumb question then, it's even more hateful now, and that the leader of our country is legitimising this. You simply can't win when you play identity politics. You end up pissing everybody off. Okay, so let's go back to the minister's definition. Anyone who identifies as a woman is a woman. Let's run with that. So who does this entail? Well, one, actual women, as in biological women. Of course. Tick. Two, people with gender dysphoria. 
I'm not making these terms up. This is the American Psychiatric Association's latest Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders, the DSM-5-TR, which was released in March 2022. This is the go-to book for the diagnosis and treatment of mental disorders and is considered one of the principal guides of psychiatry. In it, they note and accept that the area of sex and gender is highly controversial and has led to a proliferation of terms whose meanings vary over time and within and between disciplines. They define gender dysphoria as a marked incongruence between one's experienced expressed gender and assigned gender of at least six months' duration, as manifested by at least two of the following. For example, a strong desire to be of the other gender, or some alternative gender, different from one's assigned gender. And, the condition is associated with clinically significant distress or impairment in social, occupational, or other important areas of functioning. Anyway, the point is, it's a mental disorder or condition as defined by the APA, This isn't some old reference book from 150 years ago. This is the modern clinical definition. So yes, according to the minister's definition of a woman, a person with gender dysphoria can identify as a woman. So, tick, I suppose. And the third category of people that would meet this definition are liars, tricksters, and the perverted. For example, a man could pretend to be a woman and enter a lady's change room for his own perverted desires, and if he gets caught, he can claim that he identifies as a woman. How could we argue otherwise? If he went to court and swears black and blue that he identifies as a woman, and that he's entitled to go into the female change room like every other woman, how can the court say that he can't, as based on the minister's definition? Tick. How can you prove that somebody who says they identify as a woman is not a woman? You can't. That's why this definition is so stupid and why the Labor Party are playing a dangerous game. I think the solution to all this is simple. Stick to the original definition that has been around for like the last few thousand years or more. So the first category we can tick, actual women are women as per the original definition. Surprising that. The second category, people with gender dysphoria, of course we should treat them respectfully and give them the support they need, as per any other mental health disorder or condition. That is, we treat people with bipolar, or depression, or eating disorders with respect, and provide them with an appropriate level of support. In a moral society, we help people based on their needs. And the third group of people who claim to be women in order to take advantage in some way, well, they should be treated as criminals, and rightfully so. The point is, Labor in Australia have been playing this dangerous game of identity politics, and it hasn't been sitting well with many Australians. It's divisive, it's foolhardy, and it hasn't even been paying off in the polls. If Labor keep playing this stupid game, if they keep playing with fire, they're eventually going to get burnt. The Australian people will simply vote for somebody else, and rightfully so. Thank you.